Godzilla movies attract dumbass film essayists like moths to a flame. Or should I say Mothra's to a flame. They see this jolly green asshole wreaking havoc and start foaming at the mouth thinking about how smart they can sound when they say Godzilla was an allegory for nuclear bombs set to lo-fi hip-hop music. The movies are the perfect storm of look silly on the outside, but actually deep and nuanced. Godzilla doesn't work in America! Yeah, he works in Japan, dumbass, is where he lives. Is there a problem with Godzilla? Yeah, there's a problem. He's destroying the goddamn city, tell him to knock it the heck off. Why Godzilla minus one destroys modern Hollywood? Base Godzilla nukes woke Hollywood. Or should I say, Holly Weird? Brie Larson is living! With the massive success of the new smash hit Godzilla Minus One, the white boys and their lo-fi beats are crawling out of the woodwork to capitalize on the renewed interest in Top G, despite not being fans of the franchise prior to December 1st, 2023, and knowing next to nothing about his history and wide pantheon of films dating back over 70 years. Not me, of course. I would never make a video specifically to capitalize off the excitement around Minus One and the hype leading up to Godzilla X Kong The New Empire. I simply wouldn't do that. Godzilla's renewed spotlight is both a blessing and a curse. American audiences have finally come to recognize the deep and complex themes of Godzilla films. Wait a minute. Oh shit, I forgot, like 80% of these movies look like this. Oh shit, now they think there's only three good films out of 38 and Godzilla can only be a dire warning for nuclear bombs and nothing else. These movies used to mean something. Now there's just a giant monkey and a giant lizard punching each other for no reason. How dare specifically modern filmmakers and not literally the exact same people who made the original 1954 film do this. Now look, full disclosure, I didn't consider myself a fan either until Minus One, but I had seen a few others. I'd seen 2019's King of the Monsters and I liked it and for some reason I had also seen Space Godzilla. Possibly because the title was so absurd I couldn't resist checking it out like, what the hell do you mean there's a space Godzilla? Is that like Country Mac? I don't remember anything about it. I'd seen 2021's Godzilla vs. King Kong because it was the movie event of a generation and I also watched the original 1963 version, or at least the American version that sucks so I didn't like it. And I'd seen Shin Godzilla because it was made by the Evangelion guy and everyone said it was cool and edgy and they were right. Even fuller disclosure, in the wake of Dr. Skipper getting tag teamed by the entire Godzilla community, Community, I decided to do my due diligence in preparation for this video and I watched several more Godzilla films, including 2000, Against Godzilla, Tokyo SOS, Godzilla 85, Biolante, Ghidorah, The Three-Headed Monster, King Kong vs. Godzilla, the original Japanese version I liked slightly more, Destroy All Monsters, they don't by the way, vs. Megalon vs. Mechagodzilla, Zilla 98, and of course the original 1954 film, and I watched Big Action Bill's entire Showa era history video series. I wanted to watch more of the Showa era movies myself especially since they're almost all readily available on HBO Max, but unfortunately, I'm a zoomer and anytime the monsters weren't on screen, which is usually like 90% of the films, Family Guy Funniest Moments started speaking to me like the damn Green Goblin mask. I respect them well enough, you know, I understand that they were top of the line special effects films and hold a dear spot in the hearts of millions of people who were first introduced to the big guy through these classic films. But at the risk of incurring the same wrath as Dr. Skibbity Toilet, I should probably just leave it at not my thing. I think my preferred Godzilla is either a violent force of nature or the lesser of two evils but ultimately still evil so Heisei and Millennium Era films appeal to me more but like I said, I can understand the appeal of Godzilla. But the human plot lines just, they make me so sweepy. I turn these movies on and I become just the sweepiest little boy. Also they're a bit anticlimactic sometimes. Like how the is that considered defeating King Ghidorah? I did enjoy the final fight in Destroy All Monsters though, when it's just a 10v1 against King Ghidorah and they just brutally whip the shit out of him. Them kaiju really hopped off the porch. And this part in Megalon where Godzilla just breaks Megalon's knees vertically is one of the rawest things I've ever seen. He bent that shit backwards. But there was one other film I had for some reason seen in years past, before I had really started exploring these movies that always stuck with me. Godzilla Final Wars. Final Wars. Final Wars was different. Anyone familiar with Final Wars could tell you that this movie was different. Aliens, kung fu, giant monsters doing kung fu and wrestling moves, explosions, practical effects, motorcycle matrix gunfights, 
Some 41 needle drop, UFC fighter Don Fry with a sword, shonen anime influences, and the most brutal gangster ass Godzilla ever. To fully understand Godzilla Final Wars and why I love it so much, we need to take a step back and understand its director, Ruhei Kitamura, so we can fully appreciate how fucking strange it is that Toho let him anywhere near an institution like Godzilla. Ruhei Kitamura is a name some of the real ones, some of the people who watch all my videos might remember as the producer of one of my other favorite movies. Battlefield Baseball, a heartwarming and bizarre gonzo comedy film slash sporadic musical about some kids who love baseball being forced to play against a team of murderous psychopaths, which was briefly covered back in my martial arts sports films video, and is also free on YouTube and I highly recommend you watch it. Kitamura was an exciting new face in the Japanese film industry ever since his smash hit film Versus hit the scene. Versus, much like Battlefield Baseball, starred Tak Sakaguchi as the most badass man of all time. I mean, he looked hard as hell posing with a baseball bat, Versus has him wielding guns and katanas in a giant leather trench coat while he fights Yakuza and hyper zombies. They're like zombies, but they can do spin kicks. Versus is insanely violent, most of the characters spend the entire runtime drenched in blood, getting kicked down hills and exploding it. It fits right in with the Asian extreme genre that had been blooming in the 90s and early 2000s. Films like The Ring, which I just now learned was originally a Japanese film, and a personal favorite of mine, Battle Royale. You know what they call Battle Royale in France. Battle Royale with cheese. That doesn't make any sense. Well, it's f***ing true, Garfield. Jesus Christ. I'm trying to tell you a f***ing story. God damn. But Versus is really a statement about how far raw talent and creativity can get you. And boy, does Kitamura love spinning shots. Versus. More like Vertigo. I'm dizzy. The Sam Raimi Evil Dead influence in Versus is pretty hard to miss, and much like it's insane that Sam Raimi got the reins to Spider-Man after doing this type of shit, Kitamura getting the reins to not just Godzilla, but what was going to be billed as the final Godzilla, the 50th anniversary film with the biggest budget in the franchise's history, seems like a freak accident. Cool people used to be allowed to make movies, why'd we stop letting them? The way it actually happened was pretty simple though. He directed the samurai manga Azumi's film adaptation Azumi for Toho and they liked it. They recognized this new fresh-faced filmmaker with gumption and light behind his eyes. He hadn't been crushed by the system yet, but we'll get him. The last several Godzilla movies have been bleeding money, which actually was kind of par for the course with these films if we're being honest, so Toho wanted to throw a big, financially devastating party for Godzilla's 50th anniversary, then throw him in the basement for an indefinite amount of time. Kitamura was excited to direct, I mean, it's Godzilla, you're young and insane, and they just gave you the biggest budget yet. There was really no choice but to bring the thunder here. You can't just do the same old, oh, Godzilla's coming to town, and oh no, I'm a reporter, and this is a scientist, and oh no, here's another another monster, oh maybe two monsters. Fuck that, this movie's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 oh monsters. My God. And the human plotline is gonna make every other human plotline look like Discount Strawberry Day at Sneed's Feed and Seed. Meanwhile, Final Wars is like Free Nuke Day at Chuck Suck and Buck. Godzilla Final Wars takes place in its own continuity. None of the previous 50 years of movies matter. All you need to know is that there was one Godzilla, it's him, he looks like a cat, and they trapped him in ice. And he's never seen again the whole entire movie. Then there's the Earth Defense Force, humanity uniting across all countries with one common goal. Destroy all monsters. Hey, neat. But within the EDF, there's also the M organization, the Morganization, if you will. They're elite mutant humans who also fight monsters or something. They're special. I don't fuck you. They can do Matrix shit. I don't know if I designed that outfit personally. That all black with the red armband. That's it. This guy is Ozaki. He's our main human character, at least until Don Fry shows up again. Big ups, Don Fry. Ozaki's immune, and that makes him an interesting character to center this movie around. He's neither human nor monster. He shares DNA with both of us, putting him in the center of our bullshit. The crux of his character and a central theme of this movie is put forth in this confrontation he has with his fellow mutant teammate slash rival Kazama. Kazama says, you have a heart. That can be fatal on the battlefield. But Ozaki is wise with it. He says, How can we defend people without a heart? Damn, how true. But Kazama snaps back. We were born to fight, not defend. We just fight. He essentially believes the only thing that separates him from the kaiju he fights is that he's still standing. Okay, I lied. There actually is an obligatory scientist character named Otanashi. Our mutant friend Ozaki is assigned to protect her because... 
I don't know, it's peacetime and the EDF has to justify their budget. She's here researching this giant fossil that not only looks like Gigan, but is Gigan. They explain that Gigan shares DNA with mutants, they both have M-Base in their blood, meaning he is their ancestor. Wait, how does that work? Did some cavewoman mate with Gigan? Ain't he like big as fuck? I guess you could say they hooked up. Alright guys, real shit, I need you to be real with me right now. Is it blasphemous that I find the Shobujin hot? Like, I know they're like spiritual ass fairies who like serve Mothra, but like, they're kind of fine as hell, right? I mean, obviously I don't want them to be like five inches tall, but basically they give Ozaki a surprise tool that'll help us later and everyone, including me, will forget it exists every time. Okay, so we're not gonna go like totally beat for beat here, but basically all monsters attack. Oh, hey. And then these aliens called the Zillions appear. This Zillion's name is X, but his name used to be Twitter. Uh, anyway, they appear and save us from the monsters, which is convenient, but this movie moves at such a hilariously fast pace that they actually get exposed for being secretly evil within like 10 minutes of their first appearance. It's so sick. I want to briefly mention the scene where they're watching the UN Secretary General give a speech and they realize he doesn't blink. It reminds me of watching old Obama as a reptile videos from 2009 when YouTube used to still be cool. They re-release all the monsters and they f***ing kill everyone. The entire planet is killed except for the main characters. There's some Boo Saga shit. Now this doesn't really make any sense. The Zillions want to use humanity as cattle. They want us for a food supply, I guess, so why kill us? Also, surely other animals would make for better cattle like cattle. Well, it's later revealed that the Zillions want humanity for the mitochondria in our cells, which makes sense as long as you don't know that all organisms have mitochondria in their cells. Yeah, there was a point where I was going to try to sincerely argue that this movie's plot makes deep and philosophical sense, but I've just now realized that no, it actually doesn't. It's cool, but if you think about it a little bit too much, it kind of falls apart, but at the same time, you know, radiation wouldn't cause a Godzilla, you just have a lizard with cancer and destroying all the oxygen wouldn't instantly delete your flesh either. You know, like, the duck is bigger than the car, none of this shit is real. The main draw is the ape shit final half of the movie that goes absolutely bananas. Of course, the first 48 minutes have plenty of action too. The monsters attack about 20 minutes in, and the Morganization has an extended fight with Ebera, the giant lobster shrimp thing, because what movie would be complete without Ebera? What movie? And we get a ton of classic monster destruction from the likes of Rodan, Anguirus, Kumonga, Kamakurus, King Caesar, and even a CGI Zilla from the American 1998 film. I really wanted to be a contrarian and like the 98 film, but unfortunately I fell in line with the crowd and also did not like it. This movie might be the worst thing Matthew Broderick has ever done. Okay, so anyway, all hell is broken loose on Earth, there's aliens invading full scale now, everyone on the entire planet has been killed, and the monsters are running amok. And worst of all, the Zillions have utilized M-Base, a gene that all the kaiju and mutants share, to brainwash all the mutants to turn on our gang of heroes. Luckily, this doesn't affect our main characters or Godzilla or Mothra, it's very convenient. Here we get one of the first excessively cool scenes in the movie, when our main mutant Ozaki and his rival Kazama have a motorcycle race duel. In a scene possibly inspired by Mission Impossible, too, they race towards each other, only to both go into duo drifts as they open fire on one another, while Matrix dodging each shot as they spin around before tossing the guns and continuing forward in the same direction, fighting hand to hand as they race. They go down to one motorcycle after Ozaki dispatches Kazama's, then Kazama hangs off Ozaki's only for Ozaki to finish him off with a tailspin hit. Badass. My god, what a movie. So this guy, the uh, leader of the Zillions, who I just realized doesn't have a name, is talking about how the humans will all be wiped out, and Tak Sakaguchi she is cameoing in the background, just looking so sad. You know, chill dog, it's just a movie. He's acting, everything's fine. It ain't really happening, big guy. Oh yeah, and, uh, Minya's in this movie. Uh, look, I know the LGBTQ plus community has forgiven Minya, but I still haven't. Bro can do some pretty sick vape rings, though. Anyone who's seen Destroy All Monsters knows that Minya is really a force to be reckoned with. Bro's gonna dance and yo shit. The last few humans realize that they only have one hope to save the world, destroy all monsters and stop the Zillions. Gorosaurus. He can do it. We put all our trust into you. Godzilla. We're gonna free Godzilla from his icy tomb and unleash him on the monsters. For thousands of years I lay dormant. Who 
has disturbed my- Hey, best buddy! Oh, it's you. Now, I haven't seen every Godzilla movie yet, but I think so far, it's probably safe to say, Final Goji might be by far the most brutal and Black Air Force energy Goji ever. From here on out, Godzilla goes in a world tour of chaos, bodying every kaiju he comes across in wildly disrespectful ways. There's not really anywhere perfect to put this, but how crazy is it that the final episode of Lost has a visual homage to this scene from Godzilla Final Wars? Bravo, Jack Bender. Bravo. Anyway, back in Godzilla Final Wars, he does Gigan like Kennedy, Zilla gets knocked into the Sydney Opera House and then Atomic Breath set to Sum 41. It's probably the most famous scene in this movie, it's, it's so hilariously disrespectful. Like it's not even a fight, Zilla jumps and immediately gets slapped away, then annihilated. Even though Toho would eventually start doing full CGI Godzillas themselves when they came back 12 years later, this scene, and really the rest of the movie, functioned as the last defiant statement of a dying breed of filmmaking, an era of practical effects and real costumes and how much cooler that shit is. This movie obviously has a ton of CGI in it still, but they, they tried to use practical as often as possible because that's simply cooler and always will be. Speed Racer is the exception to that rule, you beautiful computer-generated nightmare. I've always been a big fan of them licensing this song out and even giving Sum 41 a major billing in the opening credits, only to use 42 seconds of it for a joke scene. I mean shit, you see their name in the opening credits and you think Sum 41's gonna be like, main characters in this movie, but... Yeah, you know, it's not that good of a film. The use of the song We're All to Blame is an obvious reference to the fact that Toho did allow that movie to happen, so they're also to blame for that. I am the first person to ever point that out. Then this Kumonga, classic giant spider, he shoots some rope paws at Godzilla, and then Godzilla grabs the rope and says, Get the fuck out of here, boy! He does his ass like Bowser. Then Kamakuras flies in, and Godzilla says, Who? And impales him on an electrical pole, does him like a giant bug zapper, and continues on his way. You can tell he's been frozen for years based on how ice cold he is now. Alright, but here comes Anguirus. Godzilla's first op. They start charging each other, but then, uh-oh, it's King Caesar and Rodan. Godzilla hops out of the way, tail slide, King Caesar charges again, juke, Caesar from the top rope. Godzilla catches him, tosses him on Anguirus' back, keep that weak shit out of here. But Anguirus does his rolling ball attack and rocks Goji in the chest as Rodan hits it from the back, pause. King Caesar comes back and soccer ball kicks Anguirus' ball and gets it past Godzilla. Most Godzilla movies, I think I'd have very little to say about the human plots, you know, not in your favorite one, of course. But in this one, they gotta get their ship, the Gotengo, into the Zillion mothership, and they don't know how they're gonna do it. They're getting fired at from all angles, but then out of nowhere comes Kazama in a fighter jet, and he says, I've changed, I'm good now! So he goes, Bwah! And Kamikaze straight into the engine while the music is all, Damn, being a kamikaze is so fucking cool and honorable. Might as well take a minute and talk about the music in this movie, because I love it so much. Godzilla gets a new theme this time around, and it's probably dangerous to say this, but I think this is my favorite Godzilla theme. Obviously, the Ifakube themes are iconic, but I love the angelic choir they got going on and this electric energy to this that really fits the tone of this Godzilla as being an absolute beast, the dominant creature on this planet, an unstoppable violent force of nature, just unfwithable. Yeah, not this this one's not so good. Drum and bass, adult swim style techno, goes crazy, it's a 10. Authentic Amen Breaks, it's a 10. I mean, I gotta shout out how much drum and bass break core is in this movie. I mean, you got Godzilla and Gigan brawling to break core. It's a 10. Anyway, back to Godzilla. He does a two-for-one special and kills Hidora with Ebera. His atomic breath is on some crazy shit here. Look at it light up these city streets, then push that building across town before exploding it. Speaking of his atomic breath being different in this movie, a meteor is coming, summoned by the Zillions to defeat Godzilla once and for all. 
So Goji digs his feet in, charges up the atomic breath, and saves the world by tanking that shit. But uh-oh, there was a giant fucking monster in there. His name is Monster X. Time for the sickest giant monster battle ever. By this time in history, they had finally gotten to the point where the rubber suits were no longer these cumbersome 300 pound things. Now they're lightweight and they can do MMA in them. Man, what a tragedy they stopped doing suitmation in major big budget movies. Then Gigan comes back upgrade, he's got more chainsaw arms now. I mean, we're, we're looking at five chainsaws, two on each arm, one in the chest insane and then mothra also joins the fight and mothra is about as useful as ever which is to say she kind of just kills herself but she takes out gigan in the process beheads him again i mean man just being a kamikaze is so cool and honorable meanwhile in the best human plot ever except for your favorite one of course ozaki has his potential unlocked and goes mega mode now he can stop lasers with his mind Hell yeah. Back in Giant Monster Land, Godzilla has Monster X on the ground, and he's about to just point blank atomic breath him like a few feet from his face. But Monster X knocks Goji's head back, so he says, I, I'll keep you alive, and just starts punching him. Do you guys think this scene where Tak Sakaguchi has a gun, but is convinced to instead fist fight is a reference to verses where Tak Sakaguchi has a gun, but is convinced to instead fist fight? Okay, now I probably am actually the first person to ever ask that. This shot of Godzilla beating the bricks off of Monster X on the monitor while Ozaki's beating the bricks off of is so raw. Shit's beautiful. Just absolute final sand for the fate of the earth. The four most powerful beings alive. Well, I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, the four most, four of the most powerful beings alive. Goji and Monster X have a classic shonen beam struggle, and Monster X finally says, All right, that's it, why I oughta, and transforms into his final form, Kaiser Ghidorah. Godzilla's watching this transformation like f but like, yeah, it had to be Ghidorah. He's the classic alien rival of Godzilla, his number one op, and I'm not gonna lie. He starts getting his ass smashed here. Pause. Kaiser Ghidorah brings him to his knees. Pause. Ghidorah breaks his back. Pause. And then he starts sucking his neck. Nah. Pause. This is gay porn. Come on. <laughs> the humans are watching this, and Ozaki says, maybe my new Mega Mode can help. So they use the Gotengo to give Godzilla a crazy back shot. Hold on. Godzilla's been charged back up to full health, and the beatdown he delivers on the Ghidorah is biblical. He starts biting at his left neck, gets zapped, says, okay, then blasts his middle head clean off. Goes back to the left head, grabs the right head that was about to zap him again, use that blast to cut the left head off. The disrespect is phenomenal. Then grab his final head, he says, come here you, throw him across town, stomp over to him on the ground, put his boots to his neck, kick him in the head, hard enough to send his entire body across town again, grab him by the neck again, body slam him back and forth like a looney tune, then throw him up in the air and do a saucy spin while charging up his atomic breath. Look at him. He is giddy with it. Absolute demon energy. And vaporize that hoe with red atomic breath. Black Air Force energy defined. The world is saved. Let's all give a round of applause to the real hero of this movie. Nuclear testing in the Pacific by the United States. God bless America. I mean, you know, if we didn't do that, Godzilla wouldn't exist, so... Maybe we're not so bad. Then Minya shows up to stop Godzilla from killing the last remaining humans, and if you thought Godzilla was on some demon shit with King Ghidorah, the stuff he's about to do to Minya. Upon its release way back in 2004, Final Wars was not a huge success. The franchise went out with a whimper instead of a bang, it lost a crazy amount of money, and many of the people who did see it didn't like it. I don't really know what else they wanted out of a celebration of Godzilla if not a batshit monster mash, but whatever. Maybe they wanted something more serious or return to form like the 30th anniversary film was. Maybe people were just sick of him in general and nothing would have gotten people excited. Or they didn't appreciate their favorite monsters getting defeated so unceremoniously. You know, unlike the old films where the endings were always so satisfying and never left you confused how knocking Godzilla into the water where he lives by the way is considered defeating him. I don't know, maybe this movie would have been more favorably received if it wasn't the 50th anniversary film and wasn't billed as the final movie for an indefinite amount of time. Or maybe the truth is, nothing would have satisfied everyone. The kaiju genre as a whole nearly died after this, I'm sure there were some, but the age of goofy, silly, practical effects heavy giant monster films doesn't really exist anymore. The legendary MonsterVerse films more or less fulfill that role nowadays, at least in being the silly and more lighthearted, goofy monster films, but I kinda doubt we're ever gonna see the likes of Gigan, King Caesar, Jet Jaguar, or Minya in any of those. 
I'd love to be wrong though. And at least we still get the G-Fest short films that do utilize suitmation and practical effects. Operation Jet Jaguar is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Can you just make this the next movie please? Like make it suitmation with tons of miniatures, thank you. Anyway, Final Wars, I'm far from the first person to defend it and I think as time goes on and that early 2000s Matrix inspired insanity type films become more fondly remembered and appreciated, people have come to love this movie. It's got a special quality to it that you can't really find in any other Godzilla film. It's pure, unfiltered insanity executed at a very high level. But everyone is different. Some Godzilla films might just appeal to you more and you don't have to like the over-the-top and absurd stuff. And you don't have to love the dire and serious stuff. The franchise has so many movies, so many tones, so many different intentions, one of them is bound to catch your eye more so than all the others. And that's fine. But for my money, it's always going to be Final Wars. Until they make something I like more, I guess. Let's get some pussy tonight.